morning, Maddie Extreme Auto, Carolina Camping. Got me beanie on. That is a projected 2000 watt inverter. Factory fitted on this beautiful new van. Not gonna name the brand, all right, but okay. Happy days. It's actually wired correctly. The AC side that is. So the Swift Hot Water Service, the main charger, right? On the um, CES panel and the fridge all those gpos are before the inverter so when he hits the inverter which i'll quickly do now i've unplugged it anyway the air conditioner comes on microwave comes on everything runs properly so there's no you know infinite magical loop of power going nowhere from the charger being fired up when the inverter's turned on that's not a problem all right follow me I'll bring you to outside so we've got Customers upgraded to the Amtron 200 amp hour lithium batteries. Great move. But if you can see what I can see, you might understand the problem. Let me point it out to you. See what they are? That's your linking cables. So what we've got here, we've got 50 mil cable. 50 mil cable running to the inverter. So there's the positive, there's the negative. All right, that's from that shunt. All right, so the negative on this battery and the positive attached that battery. So the concept of the wiring is correct, but take note of the gauge of the link cables. 10 mil guys, like 10 mil cable with a 2000 watt inverter. I mean, we've already put our clamp meter on it. We, we put the microwave on and we're getting like an 80 odd amp load on this cable. 80 amps, guys. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel safe running 80 amps. And that's just running the microwave. If he ran the full 2000, which would be yeah, like a kettle or something, that's going to get quite warm. Now, I know you're not running it for, you know, half hour and it's, it's not the point. Like when you, when you fit an inverter, you take note of its its maximum current draw, okay, which is you know, 2,000 watt inverter, continuous 170 odd amps. And you give it some headroom. You don't just, I mean, this cable won't even do that. It's not even rated to that. And you can look up any, you know, any documentation, 10 mil cable, what it's rated at. Um, it's, look, I've got a rule and I'm sure all of the big manufacturers and the big guys that do inverters every day will, will have the same concept. Whenever you run an inverter, all right, what it requires, the current draw, keep the link cables the same gauge, if not better, all right, because you are, you're creating one battery. So you want both of these batteries to discharge and charge evenly to the best of their ability. When you put a massive current draw like this on it, right, you're pulling all this energy from it, well, the current is shared, right? So if I'm pulling 150 amps from the system, then 75 will should equally pull from this. Well, the problem with this is it's it's high resistance. It's, it's not going to flow correctly through it. And there will be a mismatch in balance of charge of these batteries over time. And not to mention the heat related to this. You guys have already, um, you know, you're probably aware of like the old bike pump analogy. You start pumping the bike pump and, you know, all the air molecules are forced into a smaller hole. Well, essentially, this is the same thing. So not good. I have to fix this up with some 50 mil cable and make it better so there we go that's the link cables removed from the uh two 200 amp hour lithium batteries running a 2000 watt inverter 10 mil cable they're the link cables so brand new van ordered and this is what i try and say to you guys like you've got to be real specific when you get your caravan built and it's tough because you, you know you, you lay your trust into it and i'll oh, check that out <laughs> Obviously, they've shorted that one out. Anyway, so, you know, 10 mil cable linking two 200 amp hour lithium batteries running a 2000 watt inverter. So, so, whoever did it made the system with the design. Look at that, even shorted out that one too. They've designed the system, you know, a couple of hundred amps to flow through these cables. No, not going to happen. And funny enough, when I put the inverter on, and I put the microwave on, which would be 150, 160 amp load, it 
drag the voltage down to 12.1. Now for you guys with lithium batteries, with a load like that, over two batteries, it should not drag the voltage down that low. And I'll tell you why it dragged the voltage down that low. It's because of these. You can't handle that current uh, evenly and efficiently, especially at 12 volt. Like, if this is a 48 volt system, it wouldn't matter. You know, it's, that kind of um, amperage is the problem. You know, and that's the thing that's the inherent issue with 12 volt. You know, the amperage is high. If, so if you don't do it right, if you don't use good quality copper lug, good quality copper cable and thin cable and do it wrong, the flaws are shown a lot easily. Um, you know, because one volt drop at 12 volt is quite significant. You don't want that. Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter at the high voltages. So I will make new link cables for this, make it better. You're doing a big upgrade on this, even a brand new van. Um, this has the mini boost DC charger, which is only pumping in, you know, 15 amps. Old mate's getting out of it, so... Uh, we're going to put a Red Arc 50 in. So we're going to pump 50 amps into this from the vehicle. Guaranteed. That's what I do. And we're going to... He opt for four 170s on this. We're going to change it because the four 170s run into those cables there. <clears throat> so my issue being is when you run such high current, especially in parallel, because this isn't a high voltage input. So the PV input on your BM Pros, guys, is all your panels have to be in parallel. Okay, so the amperage keeps doubling every time you add a panel. So, you know, we're talking probably 35 amp, 30 odd amp easily going through this. So the problem is, is spay terminals, as you as you can see, it's, you can even get close and see. See the contact? This is true for any spay terminals. Just notice those little lines there, right? See them? So that what that is, is the point of contact is only on where it's scratched you can see it so when you run high current through spay terminals that's where the issue lies especially when you you're dealing with something that's on all the time and trying to charge a lithium battery